Welcome to the Language Games Podcast. My name is John Kaus, and today is part six of our Defending Young Earth Creation series. We turn now to Doctrine 7, which is that the flood covered the entire earth. Dembski writes, Briefly, however, Noah's flood, though presented as a global event, is probably best understood as historically rooted in a local event. Why would it be best understood that way? Because Dembski needs it to be. This has nothing to do with what the Bible actually says. He admits over and over again that the Bible presents things a certain way, but we should read them another way. Why? Because science, because of things in the world that, that he needs to try to f- make consistent with the Bible. And then he brings up, which every, every old earther brings up, he says, to see this, consider that scriptural claims to universality are often hyperbolic. Paul in Romans 10.18 describes their sound, the preaching of the gospel, as having gone into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. So you compare, hey, you know, Romans 10.18, Paul said their sound of the gospel went to the ends of the earth, into all the earth, and we know that wasn't, it didn't literally go into all the earth. And so therefore, basically like universality in Genesis and other places, we can just call into a question. Okay, that is not an apt comparison. Okay, these two things do not in any way compare. Why is that? Because the language is completely different in Genesis 6 through 9. It doesn't just have a reference to, you know, the, the flood waters went to the ends of the world and it went into all the earth and that's it. If you actually read the account, there are 12 distinct ways that the fl- 12 distinct ways that the Bible describes the flood covering the earth, with many of them with great explanations. It wasn't just, just that the waters covered the mountains, it covered the mountains 15 cubits, and so on. And just goes on and on with, with the detail. Let that sink in. 12 distinct descriptions of the flood covering the earth. The only way with a straight face to compare the universality in Romans 10.18 to the universality in the flood account is to ignore Genesis 6-9, through which, of course, Dembski does in his book. Does he launch into a detailed exegesis of Genesis 6-9 through to justify his position? No, he completely ignores the text, because to read the account would be to refute his theory. But we will not ignore the text. We will now enter in to this, to this text. Okay, so hear, hear and heed God's word. Start in Genesis 6, verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls. Notice that the destruction of man is lumped in with all the other moving creatures on the earth. Okay, but, but old earth creationists will say, yeah, it did destroy all of, all of the uh, humans except for the eight humans on the ark, but there were animals that were outside of you know, Noah's little valley that survived, that, that survived the flood. For, so for some arbitrary reason, the people didn't spread out. The people didn't inhabit anywhere other than Noah's little valley, but the animals did. Why? Why, why, the, why the distinction? They have, no, they, they have no reason for that. It's completely arbitrary. They have no biblical evidence that the people wouldn't have spread out beyond Noah's little valley. But that's the position that they hold. But that's not the biblical position. Man is lumped in over and over again with the rest of the creatures, which would make sense why he's building an ark to put animals in the ark. There'd be no point of having an ark if all the animals are going to survive outside of Noah's little valley. This clearly is teaching a flood that covered the whole earth. We go on. A flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything in the earth shall die of fowls also of of the air by sevens the male and the female to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth we need to bring these creatures into the ark so they can repopulate the entire world not just noah's little valley and every living substance that i have made will i destroy from off the face of the earth And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark went upon the face of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle, 
all in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the ground. They were destroyed from the earth. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the hundred and fifty days, the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month, and the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountains seen. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off, so no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh that may be that may breed abundantly. Multiply upon the earth. The Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, neither will I again smite any more everything living. So God puts a rainbow in the sky, and this is a sign not just to the people, not just to uh, the animals that were on the ark. And not just to Noah's little valley, but to the earth. It's between man and the rest of the world, these creatures, and God. That God will never again curse the ground like this. And of course, we've had plenty of local floods. Some big, some small, but plenty of them. The rainbow is the assurance against a worldwide flood, which is clearly what this is indicating. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. Now, on top of this, God provides additional commentary on the flood through the prophet Isaiah when he says, I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee. What then should we conclude? That the flood covered the entire earth, clearly. So doctrine seven is plainly taught in the Bible. And with that, taken with doctrines one through six, we have shown that young earth creation is plainly taught in the Bible. We may be wondering then, well, why do so many Christians especially Christian academics, reject the young earth, young earth position. We'll cover that in our last and final session. For more content like this, you can find us on x at underscore language games. See you next time.